Welcome everyone. I bought the cheapest Honda US 93 wheeler fender I could find on eBay. Now I really want to ramp up my fiberglass repair game in this video, so we're going to bust this thing down to bare fiberglass, make some molds so we can repair the missing pieces, do some hardcore bodywork, and paint this thing to a glossy shine. So let's do this. I picked up this basket case US 90 fender off of eBay. And if I remember correctly, I think I put in an offer of 90 bucks on it just for funsies. And by the looks of things, I think I might have paid about 88 or 89 bucks too much for it. About a third of the fender is missing, and the rest of it is a mess of cracks and spider webs all over the place. Yeah, this thing is a perfect candidate for my train wreck scrap pile US 90 build. Well, the seat's in fantastic condition. Let's rip this thing off and start buzzing the old gel coat off the fender with a scotch bright pad on the angle grinder. Man, this thing has seen better days. Now I'm kind of second guessing myself right about now and wondering what I got myself into, but whatever. Let's trace these shapes of these gaping holes out and start building some molds out of some dry foam. You can pick up this dry foam from a place like Hobby Lobby or Michael's or some other craft store. Now it really works great for making fiberglass molds, but it can be kind of a mess to work with. You're definitely going to want to wear a dusk mask if you work with it because it can be kind of nasty stuff. After I sand my mold to shape, I cover it with 100% silicone caulk. Now the caulk makes a really good release agent so your mold doesn't stick to the fiberglass patch. Now that the caulk is setting up on the first mold, let's move on to the big dog on the back part of the fender. Unfortunately, I don't have a good fender that I can take any measurements off of, so I'm just going to take a piece of cardboard and trace the shape of the gooder side of the fender, flip it 180, and use that as a template to build the second mold. I glued a couple layers of foam together with some spray adhesive because I needed the mold to be a bit thicker in this area so it would fit the shape and curve of the rear fender. And once the glue sets up, I'll start rough shaping everything with some 80 grit sandpaper. And after I sanded the foam down a bit, I traced out some more of this cardboard on the good side of the fender and then used that as a template to sand the mold to the same curve as the good side.
now on to the fiberglass. I'm using the standard Bondo brand polyester resin and fiberglass that you can get at Walmart or any auto parts store. Nothing fancy here, but it works great. I'm going to start this off by laying a coat of resin down over the mold in the fender. Then I'll lay some fiberglass cloth strips down, cover them in resin, stamp out all the air bubbles with my paintbrush, and then leave everything to sit and harden up before I remove the mold. Well, all right, the first layer is hardened up, so now it's time to pop the mold out, trim off the excess fiberglass with a cutoff wheel, and we'll start laying down the patch on the other side of the fender. Now it's time to move on to the bottom of the fender. The first thing I need to do is scuff up the resin on my patch with a gritty scotch brake pad. And then I'm gonna repeat the process we did on the top side of the fender. I'll just keep putting down a bunch of layers of fiberglass cloth until my patch is as thick as the original Honda fiberglass. And while I'm laying down the fiberglass, I want to ask you all again, if you're receiving any entertainment value or getting any cool ideas from my videos, please return the favor and share my videos on your social media or mention Bigfoot Bikes and Brews on your YouTube channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks, man. So I think we need a name for this build, and since I'm building this three-wheeler one piece at a time from the worst scrapyard junk I can find, the only thing that's coming to my mind right now is Project <laughs> Pile, but I don't think YouTube's going to let that one slide. So uh, what do you think? What should we call it? Leave me a comment below on what you think we should call the bike, and let's have some fun naming this thing. Now that my patches have set up and I scuffed the resin up again, the next step is to encase the entire top side and bottom side of the fender with this huge piece of fiberglass mat. Now I want to cover the entire fender in a large piece of fiberglass so that years down the road, the little patches won't delaminate from the fender. Now this thing's going to look brand new forever. I'm mixing up a little bit of short strand fiberglass filler here. I think my fender is off of a 1971 or later Honda US 90 because it has some holes on the lower front part of the fender where Honda mounted some fender guards on the later bikes. And I think the really early 1970 bikes didn't have that option, so I'm going to cap off the holes with this filler before I lay down my fiberglass mat on the top part of the fender.
Yeah, I think the bike's gonna weigh about 20 more pounds in stock, but this is gonna work out great. Now let's trim off the excess fiberglass and start scuffing and sanding the resin and get everything ready for some body work. The fiberglass mat and resin is really rough at this time, so I need to sand everything down with some 80 grit sandpaper. Then once the resin is roughed up and has some teeth to it, I'm going to mix up some long strand fiberglass filler to smooth out all of the imperfections. This long strand fiberglass filler is really cool stuff. It's basically like Bondo with a ton of fiberglass hairs mixed into it. Now the stuff is super strong and a lot more resistant to cracking compared to normal Bondo type of fillers. Now my plan here is to spread a really light coat of this stuff over the entire fender and then I'll start sanding it down to the point just thin enough where I start poking through the fiberglass resin below. I still had some imperfections at this point, so I mixed up some short strand fiberglass filler, laid down a skim coat of that, and went for another round of sanding. Then I skim coated the entire fender with some normal Bondo, just to get rid of any remaining air bubbles. Then I sanded it back down one more time, and bam! After a dirty, dusty day of sanding, we're ready for primer. Just that fast. Now that the bodywork has been sanded smooth with some 400 grit sandpaper, I'm going to mix up some polyester filler primer. This stuff is basically spray bondo more or less. And the plan is to cover the entire fender with this stuff and then look for any imperfections or air bubbles that I may have missed in the bodywork. Some of you US-90 owners out there might have noticed by now that some of the body lines on the back aren't totally perfect and things are rounded off here and there a little more than a stock fender. And yeah, I noticed it too, but I figured it's going to be close enough for this type of build and I can always restore a nicer conditioned fender in the future if this one really gets to bug me. There were a couple of small air bubbles here and there in my body filler, so I'm going to fill them in with a little Bondo. And once that's set up, I'm going to give everything one more round of sanding with some 400 grit paper. Now I think I lost track at this point how many rounds of sanding this is. Yeah, things are starting to get there. Now it's time for one more round of primer, and then I'm gonna dust everything with some black guide coat, and I'm gonna start hand block sanding everything back to perfection. This guide coat and block sanding is the key to getting really smooth bodywork. The goal here is to block sand all of the guide coat away during sanding 
and any areas that still have black on them are your low spots, filler edges, and scratches. You're going to want to keep block sanding with really long strokes until all of the guide coat is gone. But be sure not to sand too much to the point where you break through your primer to the surfaces below. Because if you break through your primer, you're going to have to spray down another coat and repeat this process once again. Now it's time to spray down some single stage urethane paint and the color I'm using is 1972 Mazda Earth Green paint code EU. It's got a little more yellow in it than the stock Honda Parrot Green but it's pretty darn close. Yeah, this thing turned out really glassy. And here's one of the joys of spraying outside. A mosquito landed in the paint, <laughs> that dirty dog. But no worries though, because I can sand him out when I wet sand the fender. There was the tiniest bit of orange peel in my paint, and I want this thing to look perfect. So I'm gonna buff everything with a little cutting compound, and then finish everything off with a polishing pad and polishing compound. It's going to look uh, really shiny compared to the stock Honda paint from this era, but it's sure going to look nice in a motorcycle show. I was originally planning on making my own graphics for the bike, but somebody was selling a set on eBay for a reasonable price, so I decided to go that route and save .0001% of my time on the fender. Well, that was a whole lot of work, but it was a really good learning experience and it turned out great looking in the end. But now we gotta figure out something for that gas tank. And I'm gonna apologize in advance for what I'm about to do to this 1974 tank, but don't get too upset now, because this thing's a rusty, leaky nightmare, but I'm gonna go to town on it next time and I'm gonna make it a thing of beauty. So be sure to subscribe if you don't wanna miss out on the rest of the tank restoration. And if you've received any value from this video, please return the favor and click the like button on your way out. And in the meantime, if you want to check out more Bigfoot Bikes and Brews content, you can click the video on the left. And if you want to check out last week's video, you can click the video on the right. And I'll see you next time.